So let us understand first of all why do we need these things or why do we need to learn about G code? Okay. So G code is mainly used for any kind of CNC machine. So CNC, what it stands for? CNC means uh, computerized numerical control. Okay. So any uh, kind of machine that is computer controlled would require G codes. So the command that you usually do uh, manually, we want the computer to tell the machine to do. So the computer tells the machine by using something called G code. OK, so we will see what are the main G codes that are typically used uh, in CNC machining. So these codes they are the same for both CNC milling and CNC lathe. OK, I'll just write down here that it is computerized. Numerical control. And it's for both milling and lathe. OK, so now uh, let's see what are these G codes. Actually, there are only really very few number of codes that you need to know for sure. And even if you are confused, you can come back. You can check at these uh, code files that I have uploaded and you can write the code accordingly. OK, but there are some codes that you need to memorize. Uh, so those are included in the main G code file and I'll tell you which ones you need to memorize. OK. Uh, the memorizing is mainly for the exam. For the final exam, for sure, I'll bring a question where you have to code uh, for the task that I have provided. Okay. So how you will do that is you can learn only through examples. So an example is also provided uh, for you to refer to. Okay. So the first variable is called n, and n is the line number in the program. OK, so line number is just telling you this is step number one, step number two, step number three, etc. So the machine follows this line number. So it will do first uh, line number one, then two, then three and so on. So it is in a sequence for you to keep track of what the machine is doing. You have to use the correct line number. You can give it as N1, N01, N001. Depends on how you are using it. Uh, you can directly do N1, N10, N11, whatever number you want, but you have to provide your own sequence. So whatever is the next greatest number, the machine will do that function next. OK. The second one is G and this is why it's called G code. OK, sometimes they call it as G and M codes. OK, but typically it's called G code and G is used as uh, it is to address for preparatory commands. So this is to prepare the machine to do any function and we'll see later what uh, are the available commands. OK. Uh, M M is to do any miscellaneous function. So miscellaneous function means uh, it could be, let's say, to change the tool that you are selecting. There are various tools that are uh, used in the machine, so we can change the tool. We can adjust the speed of the spindle. We can adjust the feed rate, etc. So miscellaneous function is also an important code. That's why mostly uh, they refer to these codes even as G and M codes. OK. R, this is only used for some jobs. Uh, if you have any curved jobs, you can define the size of the arc radius that you need to do. And again, uh, if you remember to do an arc in the conventional machine, it is very difficult and it is kind of impossible to do a perfect arc using the manual machine because you cannot control the two handles, the X and Y axis very easily to do the curved job. But in the case of CNC machine, these codes will easily allow us to do these shapes. So this is the advantage, one of the advantage of CNC machines. Uh, S, it defines the spindle speed. 
okay so spindle speed means the speed of at which uh, in the case of milling machine the speed at which the tool is rotating okay and in the case of lathe machine it is the uh, speed that the workpiece is rotating okay t is for tool selection so whatever tool number you need to select you have to use the code t and f is for defining the feed rate Feed rate means the speed at which you are doing the job, not the speed of the spindle. Uh, let's say the speed at which you are going or you are moving the mill bit in the X axis, the speed at which you are moving it in the Y axis and in the Z axis. Or in the case of lathe, the speed at which you are moving the tool into the object or moving it along the object. Okay, so this is called as feed rate. So this is also a very important feature. The feed rate and spindle will change depending on the material you are using for the tool as well as for the workpiece. Okay. And the last three commands here is X, Y, and Z. So this is to change anything in X, any a position in Y, and any position in Z. So we are using Cartesian coordinates. So you just need to mention if you have a block like this, and this is your origin. If you want to reach here and this distance is 10 and this distance is also 10. And this axis is X. This axis is Y. You will say you need to go to X 10, Y 10. OK, so it's very simple to define it. You just have to specify what are the coordinates in X, coordinates in Y. OK, and it will be more clear when you see the example. So these are the main codes. All of these for sure you need to know for the exam. OK, and now we'll see how we apply this one. OK, so now that we know what is G, it, we told that it is preparatory command. We can do various commands as mentioned in this page. So G00 is called rapid positioning. G01 is linear interpolation g02 is circular interpolation now these three they're kind of uh, in the same group i would say g00 is to uh, ensure that you are starting at the origin okay this command is not very important uh, because you can use either g01 or g00 to do the same operation okay so I would recommend you guys to just use G01. You don't need to use G00, but you might find it in the example that I have covered. So G01 is for linear interpolation. Linear interpolation means if you want to move along a line, let's say in X axis, you want to move straight, or if you want to move in Y axis straight, then you have to use the linear interpolation code, which is G01, okay? For circular interpolation, you have to use G02 if you are moving clockwise. So what this means is if you have a part like this and you want to do a curve that starts from here and ends here, you will first go to this position by using G01 and specifying the coordinates. Let's say X10 and Y10. Then what you have to do is you have to move as a curve. To move in circular or curved manner, you have to use G02. Okay, so G02 you will specify, and you need to specify what are the final coordinates. Okay, so the final coordinates, let's say it is x20 and y20. Okay, so this is how you will use the code for doing any kind of circular job. But one thing we are missing in this line is later we will also specify what is the radius of the curve. Just like how you specify in uh, AutoCAD the fillet radius. Similarly, you have to specify what is the radius of this curve. OK. So that is an example of the difference between G01 and G02. 01 again was just to move the tool in the linear axis. So it will go linear 10 linear. 10 in the Y. 
And if you want to, if it was just linear like this, then you could just use G01. Since you are doing a curve, you have to use G02. Okay. G03 is the same as G02, but instead of moving clockwise, the machine will understand that it has to move counterclockwise. If you are starting from this point and going back to this point, you have to use G03. So it would be G01, X20, Y20, and then G03, uh, X10, Y10, and you have to specify the R. So this is counterclockwise. And this one is for clockwise. OK, so depending on uh, whatever is convenient for you, like if you reached one coordinate, how would you make the arc? If it is counterclockwise, use G03. If it is clockwise, then you have to use G02. So the codes are pretty simple. If you understand it with an example, it should be very easy to use. OK, so that's why I'm providing you some examples along with explanation. Now G20 or G21. This is in order to ensure that the units that you are using uh, is it in inches or in metric system, which is millimeters. OK, so why do we need to specify this? Sometimes the machine, it can function as both uh, metric and use the American system, which is inches. So if you don't specify it to the machine, by default, it will take one of these. But again, we are not sure which will it take. Most of the machines available in UAE will take it in metric. But uh, if you have imported the machine or something and you are not familiar with the machine, you are confused between these. It's always better to specify what uh, units you want to use. So G21 is what we typically use because we work with millimeters. OK, so in the beginning of all this, you had to write the code. G21. And that's it. This is one line. OK, so let's specify this as line number one, line number two, line number three, line number four and so on. So in the beginning, you have to specify what kind of units you are using. OK, so that the machine will take this as 10 millimeter. If you put it as 20 G20, then it would be 10 inches, not 10 millimeters. Now G9091, this one is not required for us. So you don't need to uh, worry about this one for the like if you're preparing for the exam, you don't need to use this. And typically for any job that you do, you don't need to use this. Uh, G28 also is not uh, for you guys. It's not necessary to uh, memorize these. OK. Also G40, G41, G42. These are all not required for you. So these are the ones which you need to. Uh, let's say memorize again this one. The first one it is optional. To use. OK. So if you want only really you can use this. This G00 and G28 is almost the same. OK. But again uh, these four commands you must know from the G codes. OK, so again, we are looking only at G codes right now. We will look at M codes in the next slide. Engineer, uh, sir, I, wanted... well, I have a question. Can you repeat the G00? G00, yes. This is called rapid positioning, or if you want to go to uh, X0, Y0, and Z0. OK, so this is typically our origin. And it is located at the corner here. So anytime if you want the machine to go to 000, you specify this command. That's why it's called rapid positioning. So it is going rapidly to the origin. So at any point, you can ask the machine to go back to zero by typing G00. This is the functionality of uh, rapid positioning. But typically we don't use this because we are always moving with uh, G01, uh, 10, 10 and so on. So it is better to just continue with G01 rather than using G00, then again G01 and so on. 
we don't want to always make the machine go back to zero uh, because when you're doing one job you will have to go to various locations to complete the job and then in the end only you need to come back to the origin so it's not used that often okay but again it's your option if you want you can finish one task let's say an l shape then you can come back to zero then you can go to another location do a curve or something and then come back to zero so um, we don't use it much but it can be used if required again the g code there is no one way to write the whole code people can do it in many ways many combinations are possible to write the same uh, to write the code for the same job uh, because if you have a job like doing two l shapes one of the engineers could start with the right side l shape and one could start with the left side and one could start at this point the other could start at this point at this point at this point so there are various combinations that are possible for the code so it's not necessary that uh, you and your friend wrote codes you see difference in the code and you think one is wrong and one is right no both of them could be right as well and both of them could be wrong as well <laughs> it depends on how you are doing the job okay so it is more like the sequence that you are following will define your code like will help us to understand whether you are doing it right or wrong so i don't follow one answer key while grading this i actually go through every line of your code and then i check if you are understanding what you are doing and then i grade based on that okay so don't worry if your code is not looking exactly the same as what is shown here or as shown in the example it might be correct uh just you have to uh, follow the sequence whatever sequence that you are using okay i hope that answered your question uh we'll move on to the next slide which talks about the m codes now m codes are instructions describing miscellaneous functions like calling the spindle rotation coolant etc so what are these miscellaneous function we have spindle uh, whether you want to move forward or reverse we can set that by calling m03 or m04 depending on what direction you want to uh, move the spindle the next thing is if you want to stop the spindle m05 if you want to change tool then you have to use m06 uh if you want to turn on the coolant m08 and if you want to turn off the coolant m09 and m30 is end of program so at the end of every g code you will find m05 and m30 so the last two lines if you write m05 and m30 you will receive some grades for sure okay so these should be your last two lines for every g code if this is there for the question that i ask you then very easily you will get grades for this okay so this is uh, telling you that the machine is going to stop and the program has ended okay so that is very simple uh, way for you to earn some grades uh the other thing is let's see what are the different codes here M03 is for moving clockwise. So if you want to drill, we typically move clockwise, right? So we have to uh, use the code M03 most of the time to start the job. And when you are specifying M03, with supplementary to this, we have to also specify what is the spindle speed, which was S. If you remember in the first table, spindle speed was defined by S. and you will specify the rpm whether it is like 2000 rpm or 1000 or whatever uh, rpm that you are going to use depending on the workpiece and the tool that you are using so these two will come in the same line so you will find this most of the time together okay so this is to start the spindle as well as to choose the direction of at which it is rotating 
So commonly we'll use M03 and S, uh, S depending on the material, you have to choose the speed. Or in the question, most of the time I give you what should the spindle speed be. So you just have to use uh, that value over here. Okay. So that is for the M03, M04 and M05 is covered here. It is to stop the spindle. And M06, okay, I'll just show how this code is used. So M06, we need to specify if, uh, let's say you're doing a milling job and you have a circle, uh, circular holes. This one has one diameter. So on the diameter, let's say it's uh, 2 mm. And this diameter is 5 mm. So if you want to change the tool to do the 5 mm job from the 2 mm, you will have to uh, do the automatic tool change function. And you will have to uh, change this tool. So I'll show you how to do it. You have to write this command and you will specify the tool number. This is tool and you will say 02 or whatever is the number uh, that you have set in the machine. So usually I give you a table with the tool numbers. So I'll write here, this is T01, T02, T03, up to six tools the machine can have at one time. So T06, and this might be 2mm, 3mm, 4mm, 5mm, and so on. Okay, so actually I have to change this to 4, because I said we are using 5mm tool. So depending on the size that you need, you have to change the tool for the, uh, let's say for the milling machine, or even for the lathe machine later on, we'll see. Okay. But this example is mainly for milling machine. Again, all the G code is the same, just that you will not have Z axis for lathe machine. There is no Z axis for lathe. Either Z or any uh, axis, which is the third axis. Because typically we have X, Y, and Z axis. But in the case of... Uh, in the case of milling machine, we usually uh, have the up and down axis as Z, okay? And the other two axes are X and Y. <coughs> so this is how it is defined. And in the lathe machine, uh, I'll just draw it below. We just have two axes. Because if you remember, there is a cylinder which we need to cut. So the axis is the diameter axis and the radial uh, axis with uh, the axis along the cylinder. So it could be called X and Y. For some machines, they call it X and Z. But there will be only two axes at a time. Okay. So this is the only difference between the G code for lathe and milling. Instead of using three axes, you will use uh, only two axes in the case of lathe machine. And the coolant function, depending on uh, whether the job requires coolant or not, you have to specify M08 and M09. So you can specify M08 over here. If you're using uh, aluminum, if you're trying to uh, machine aluminum or steel or something, you have to use M08 and M09 at the end to stop the coolant. So I will ask you in the question also whether if you are required to use the coolant or not. If I say coolant is required, then you have to specify M08. And at the end, you have to specify M09. There is no other supplementary code with this. It is going to be the uh, just M08 and M09. Okay. So all of these codes are required to be known. Okay. Uh, these two it's a rare chance of these coming. So the main ones are one, two, three, four, and the last one, five quotes.
okay so these are for the miscellaneous functions and the g codes are covered now i have uploaded another table I'll just open it up in uh, ad hoc here okay so this file it consists of all the g codes okay and their description on the right so this is just a reference for you guys to check when you are doing your project or something or if you are interested in working in uh, this field you can have this as a handbook with you to be familiar with what are the different types of g and m codes so all the codes are there in this file you can just keep it for your reference uh, we will not ask you to memorize anything from this uh, specifically the ones that you have to memorize are, are the ones that i showed you in these uh, slides and you can find the same file in blackboard as uh, main g code file okay can see there is some sort of lag okay so now i am going to show you an example of how to do a curved job like this okay so what we see here is we are doing a job an arc like this and another arc like this okay and the first arc if you see we are going to move clockwise and for the second arc we are going to move counter clockwise so let us see how to do the g code for this job so the answer is shown on the left this is the whole g code so i'll go step by step with the g code in here okay and this is where uh, we have to go and start doing the job so on the right side the image is just there for me to show you or what is going to happen during each step so the first line as you can see it is written g21 so this is for the units so this one we are just specifying the units that it is using metric system which means we are using millimeters okay <clears throat> the second one this is not important okay this g90 command it's not uh, required so you can ignore this one i'll just cancel it out okay that is not required we can start with m06 t01 so in the beginning of the job if the drill if the machine is not having the tool that you need for initially you will have to specify m06 t01 and you have to select this tool okay in this manner so m06 is the uh, command that you have to use in order to change the tools t01 is the tool that we are going to use so depending on what is the size and depending on the table that i provide you you will choose whether it is t01 t02 t03 and so on okay after this is done the third line you can see they are specifying g00 again this g00 can be written as g01 as well it's not required to specify g00 but you can write g00 or g01 x0 y0 z30 now he specified x0 y0 which is the corner okay but the z he mentioned 30 why is this this is because we don't want the uh, tool to touch the workpiece in the beginning so at reference we set it as any height above 0 this could be 10 or 20 or 15 whatever you choose but it should be greater than 0 just to ensure that the tool is not touching the workpiece in the beginning because sometimes what happens is the workpiece will not be leveled so maybe at this part it is not touching the workpiece but at a point in the center when the tool moves it will start to scratch the surface if it is un, uh, not leveled and this will create many issues so to avoid this 
<coughs> a tool must be lifted to a certain height. Okay. This is like a safety measure just taken to not hit the surface. The next step is to start the tool. So to start the tool to move clockwise, we have to use M03 as I explained earlier. And the speed is set at 2000 RPM. Okay, so whenever you use M03, you have to specify the speed. So spindle speed. and it is clockwise rotation. Okay, and here I'll just write automatic tool change. And tool number one. This is just comments for you to understand what are each uh, step. So this could be G01 or G00, whichever you wish. They are both doing the same command. And we are doing Z30 because we don't want to touch the surface. Okay, so I hope that explains all these codes for now. Okay, and you will see these codes are in red color. And these at the end are also in red color. This means almost all the programs that you are going to use will use these codes for sure. So any program you take, you have to specify the units. You have to specify the tool. You have to specify your reference. And you have to specify uh, how will the tool start and the speed of the tool. Also, you have to stop the spindle and you have to end the program. So if you write these codes, you will get the grades for this at least for sure. OK. But again, this number might be different depending on the material that you are using. This tool number will be different depending on the tool that I ask you to select and so on. But it will use G21, it will use M06, G00 or G01, M03, M05 and M30. OK. So just be familiar with these. Uh, I'll write these two also over here. This is to stop. Spindle. And end of program. OK. So now let's see how we will do the code in order to do the curved job. So first what we will do is we'll specify the location that we want to start doing the uh, drilling. So we'll specify G00 or G01, uh, X15, Y15 and Z10. You must be noticing this case specified G00 so it should go to origin. But on top of that they're saying that this is his new origin. X15, Y15, Z10. So I would say this G00 term is a bit confusing to use. So just use it as G01. OK. Because if you are specifying only G00 without the X, Y and Z, it will go to 0, y, uh, 0 and 30. But this is like he's putting reference every time he's moving around in the axis. So it is a bit confusing. That's why I want you to just use G01. Okay. So G01, X15, Y15, and Z10. So X, uh, let's assume this is X axis and this is Y axis. So we went 15 here, 15 here, and Z, he just lowered it a bit from 30 to 10. We still have not started cutting. Why we should not specify it directly in the same line? If you specify the depth, in the same line, what will happen is the tool will start hitting the floor from the beginning. Like as it is moving, it will start hitting the uh, workpiece and it will start drilling over here as well, which we don't want. We want it to start only from this location. So in the first line, we specify only the uh, only the uh, coordinates. And after that, we are doing the drilling in the second line. 
So you will see G01, which is again linear motion because you are just moving in the Z axis linear. So you are using G01. And then you are specifying Z minus 4. Minus 4 is the depth of the uh, hole that you want to make. So this is 4 mm deep. Now again, uh, you can see that it is written minus 4. Minus 4 is not with respect to tan. This is following the proper coordinates. So I'll just show you the coordinates. So let's say this was 10. Minus 4 is here. It's not 6. Okay, this is wrong. So whatever value you specify here, that is the next coordinate. Okay. <coughs> Some students make this mistake during the uh, exam. They think they have to go 4 mm deep, it will go to 6. No, this is wrong. Okay. You have to specify minus 4 in order to drill under the workpiece. Just imagine this is the workpiece. So in order to go 4 mm deep, you have to specify minus 4 as the Z. Okay. And now you will notice F50 is mentioned. F50 is the feed rate, the speed at which the tool has to move downward. Okay. So that is 50 he has specified. What is this 50? It is 50 millimeters per minute. Okay. So this is how the software takes the feed rate. So it will take about one minute to move 50 mm down. Okay. So depending on the material and the tool, you will have to decide what is the feed rate. And usually this and the spindle speed I give in the question. Or if it is not given, you have to assume it to be any value like 50 or 100. These are the typical feed rates and spindle speed is 1000 and 2000. But I'll try to give it to you in the exam. Okay. <coughs> so now the next line, we are going to do the uh, curved job is G02 X35 Y45. And the radius is mentioned as 18. So G02 was to move clockwise. So since we have to move in clockwise direction, we mentioned G02. Or else it would have been G03. <clears throat> so we mentioned G02, the final coordinates of the location that we have to go. And then R, uh, R is specified as the radius of the arc. Okay. So we will see this job, it's shown better in the next slide. So we have to go to this location, <coughs> which is X35 and Y45. Uh, so it's the same line. So I'll just show here that this is the line that we are going through. So to reach this location, we all we had to do is write this one line over here. <coughs> so once this is done, we can specify that we want to move uh, G01. I'll just rewrite all of these as 01s. Okay. So you can specify G01 in Z10. This is to remove the tool from this point uh, and go up. Because we don't want to continue drilling to move to the next point, right? The next point is located here. So we need to first lift the tool and then go to the next location, then drill and then do the next job. So for that reason, in the next line we have specified to lift the tool. And the line after we are specifying the new location that we have to start drilling. So X15, Y35. <clears throat> so we move to this location as well. And then we are lowering the tool at this point. Okay. So Z minus four. And this time the curve is counterclockwise. So we have to specify G03 instead of G02. And then specify the final location, which is the location at the end over here. Uh, it's visible in the next page. Yeah, 
this point for this one. This is the uh, X35 and Y65. So X35 and Y65. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and again, we are specifying what is the arc radius. It is 18 mm. So if you take this to be the radius of this will be 18 mm. Okay. Then we have uh, to again lift the tool and go to the origin. Okay. This is just a safety measure. You know, uh, like going back to the reference is just a safety measure so that things are fine. We don't have the tool anywhere in the middle of the workpiece at the end of the task. So <clears throat> in the end, it's always better to return the machine back to the origin. Okay. So G, uh, first we lift the tool and then we specify that you have to move to the origin. So that's uh, so this is all you need to do this curved job. OK. So mostly it's very simple. It's very few lines of code that you need to write. OK. Uh, and these things will be common. The ones that are mentioned in red will be common. And the other thing to keep in mind is you have to specify G01 instead of G00. Don't use uh, G00. If you use it's fine. I will not reduce any marks, but it's uh, less confusing to use G01. Okay. And again, all the coordinates are respect to your origin. So origin in this example is, it will just change the color. Origin is over here. Okay, so make sure you are writing all your commands with respect to the origin. So this coordinate over here is with respect to this origin. So you need to know this distance from here to here. This is 35 and this distance is around uh, in this case, it was 65, right? So this is how you specify the coordinates. OK. Don't assume that if you have reached here. And if you want to go to this location, don't assume that this is your zero point and you have to move only. Uh, let's assume this distance is 15. If you specify X15, this will not get you to this location. So it will not get you to this location. It will just go back actually. If this distance was more than 15, say if this was 30, then if you specify X15, it will just go to this location. It's always with respect to your zero. Okay. So keep that in mind when you are writing the code. <clears throat> so in typical cases, I give you the question and I specify where is your origin. And it is uh, mostly on the uh, bottom left of the workpiece. In this example, it was on the top left. But again, uh, it depends on how you orient your workpiece. This is also bottom left. If the if you assume this workpiece to be kept this way, this location that I have marked is the same location here. Why we use bottom left? Because if you take normal axis, we can avoid negatives if we are using these coordinates, right? This quadrant. So we are using this as your origin. This is how it works. OK, so that is mainly to avoid how you are going to uh, like when you're writing the code to avoid any negative values in the other axis. The only negative value you will have is in the Z axis. That is depending on the depth of the job, you will have to specify the z-axis. OK, so I hope this is clear. If you have any questions, please ask. If not, we will. Uh, yeah. Can we change the, the point of the origin on the, on the machine? Yes, you can do that. Also, uh, what's the of, uh, I will demonstrate that in the uh, next experiment, which is the CNC milling experiment. 
there is an option where you can change the uh, origin. But again, that will complicate things. Like it's better to keep this as the origin at all times. Uh, it's easier unless you have a specific job where you have to change the origin. Uh, what about uh, the order of operations? So like if you put X, uh, X, Y, and Z value, will it go up yes. in the Z value? Which way? I didn't get you. So if we put X, Y, and Z, for example, will it go in a straight line uh, from the point we give it to the point it goes? Or does it go with Z first and then X and Y? Or how does it, it work? Goes, uh, it goes uh, straight to that point. It will not go X first, then Y, then Z. No. It follows all the, depending on which line you wrote it, it will follow that order uh, together. Let's say in the same line, if you write X and Y, it will move both in X and Y together. But if you specify X first, the next line, if you specify Y, the next line Z, then it will do one by one. That's why I said we shouldn't mention the Z with the X and Y in the beginning when you're going to the location. Because if you do that, it will start to go down as well to drill when you're moving from the origin to the point that you want to reach. I hope that is clear. It's clear, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Please let uh, me yes, know. Yes, engineer, I have one question. Yes, tell me. Uh, like, how does the which line of code says the machine should move in a arc, not straight line? Yeah, that was the uh, G02. One second, we'll just. Yeah, this G02 is specifying that it is an arc, and this is clockwise. And G03 is to specify it's an arc and it is counterclockwise. But again, if you don't specify the arc radius, nothing will work. You have to specify okay. the radius of the arc as well. Yes. Okay. 